sleep or lie. Hello and welcome to the live stream. How is everybody doing tonight? We are doing a free coaching live stream again on Monday, like I promised. Um, last Monday I was out of town, so I wasn't able to do my live stream, but welcome to back to the live streams. I'm excited to be here and answer all your questions. Hello, how do I do turns with the pull boy if I don't do flip turns? Oh, good question. If you're using a pull boy for um, your training and you aren't doing flip turns, you touch the wall with your hand, turn around, but keep your thighs squeezed, turn around, uh, do the squat and jump off the wall. You don't want to ever separate your legs. So if you can turn around on the wall by grabbing it and turning your body around with your hands, that would be the best method. Um, just try not to use your legs. I would say it's not any easier to do it with a flip turn, um, only because when you do a flip turn, it's pretty easy for the impact of the water when your legs come down to actually pop the pull boy out. So it's not like any easier to do it with a flip turn. Good question, thank you. I uh, hope I answered it. Next question, please. Anybody with a question, I am here to answer you. Patricia says, thank you, you're welcome. Changing the lighting in here a little bit, you couldn't tell. I forgot that it was dark now outside. Here to answer your questions. On uh, swimming or any swimming related topics, I'm the online coach for the whole world. If you have any questions about your training, perhaps I can help you, you know, with some training sets or some ideas, things like that, or technique advice. That's what I'm here for. I will probably stay on this live stream for an hour or two tonight, depending on the super chat as well as the live chat. I'm also probably going to be doing a little bit of work if it starts to lull in the chat. Work meaning scheduling more, more lessons and editing videos. Okay. I'll look around the camera here at my computer because I'm using a tripod. Okay, I wonder. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm here to answer all your swimming questions. I am your online swim coach.
Subscriber question by James Macro. I try to put my head facing down in freestyle, but water keeps going up my nose. Thanks. Nearage, Nearage, for those of you who don't know, is a moderator in this chat. He'll also be representing me sometimes as Rocket Swimming. Um, he's my right-hand man. He's been with me for the longest time. Uh, actually, no, Will has been with me the longest time. Uh, Will produces my videos. Um, I use his studio a lot of times for my filming. But Neeraj has been with me second longest. He started out as a subscriber and then commented on a video that was a very thoughtful and well, well written comment. And I got his email, we got exchanging information and found out he does video editing and I was in a time in my career where I needed a video editor. So it just all worked out. But anyways, Neeraj says there was a subscriber question at one point on probably one of our videos that says, I try to put my head facing down in freestyle, but water keeps going up my nose. It's a good question. So if you're getting water up your nose, <clears throat> you probably haven't gotten comfortable with the breathing in swimming yet. So it's uh, usually only in and out with your mouth. That's what I recommend, in and out with your mouth only. But if you do want to go uh, secular breathing, so you want to go out of your nose in with your mouth. So that'll keep water pretty much ever from seeping up your nose. If you want to do that, it's uh, some beginners find that helpful. So you blow the air out of your nose and then when you turn to the side or in front of you, you breathe in with your mouth, out with your nose, in with your mouth, out with your nose. That way, whenever your face is in the water, air is coming out of your nose and therefore it's impossible for water to go up your nose. It's a good question. Uh, Rosario says, hello. Hello, how are you? Where are you guys all like coming in here from? Like, where's everybody from? I'm always curious. City, state, or uh, country rather, there's probably some uh, countries other than the US here, even though I'm in the US. What other cities and states are out there? Okay, we are still doing an Ask Me Anything live stream, but I'm going to be working. Someone says Massachusetts, USA. That's a big bet. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So if you are a Patriots fan, I am a Steelers fan. But that's okay. I respect the Patriots. Bill Belichick. Tom Brady, man, what a heck of a player. LOL. <laughs> we miss Brady. Yeah. Seriously, literally been year after he leaves the Patriots, he wins a Super Bowl with another team that just, that just proves you're the best. Huh. That's interesting. YouTube sent me an email about me being live. It's like, oh, interesting. I had no idea. Welcome to this low-key live stream tonight. Um, depending on how much contribution, how many contributions we get in the super chat during these live streams, we are going to do them more regularly. So maybe you'd see me on here every night or every afternoon or maybe every morning and every night, something like that. So we'd like to do more frequent live streams to be able to honestly just be the online coach who's always there for swimmers to come in and, and ask questions and talk to them, show them footage or something, or send them footage in an email. Like I could just be sitting here, one of you guys, a subscriber could be like, hey, I have a video of me, of me swimming. Can I just send it to you right now in this live stream via an email? And I'd be like, yeah, that's a bet. Let me put my email in the live chat. That's actually a great idea. So I'm gonna chat publicly as myself, my personal account here, interesting. So send your videos to this email, Johnny, at rocketswimming.com, and I can analyze them for you and talk about them right here on this live stream. There you go. The 
comment should be popping up in the chat here any second because I did it from my iPad. Well, let's hope. It already showed up and I just missed it. No. Ria Singh says hello. Hello, Ria Singh, long time subscriber. There we go. I think my email finally popped in there. I don't know. I still don't see it. Hmm. Oh, Rocket Swimming just posted it too, just in case. Perfect. You guys might see two emails. That's interesting. The Rocket Swimming pops up, but the Johnny Songer one doesn't. What if I restart this app? Ooh, I gotta put myself in work focus mode. We do not want, we do not want that mishap with the internet that, that one time and someone tried to FaceTime me. All right, ask me anything live stream. Email me your videos. I can talk about them right now because I can look at them on my computer, which is in front of me, behind you. Not literally behind you. Not in the Halloween spirit that much. My hips hurt when I swim breaststroke. Breaststroke can be hard on the, on the joints, especially your hips, your ankles, and your knees. So... Be careful when, when learning breaststroke and working under breaststroke. Take it slowly. And when you kick, make sure you're doing each step at first very slowly and carefully to strengthen those new muscles in those joints or near those joints, the supporting muscles, so that you bring your heels up nice and slow, strengthening your hamstrings and your glutes. You turn your heels out, your toes out, so that they're fit. Uh, pointing in opposite directions or facing out opposite directions, but your foot is still flexed. Let's see, <laughs> I guess I can show you with my sandals. You guys are gonna get to see what I'm wearing tonight. So, with your foot flexed like this, you're gonna pull your heels up to your rear end, get them out, and then squeeze the water back together. Squeeze the water. Some people will point their toes at the end of the kick. You don't have to. Um, some people, find it helpful. It is better to do that, but I usually find that if beginners try that too soon, um, what ends up happening is that they'll start pointing their toes long before it's time, and then they do this floppy, weird breaststroke kick that isn't, isn't good. It's not catching any water. It's like a wide freestyle kick, or I mean a wide butterfly kick. So I don't, I don't like that. But do everything slowly. Control the snap back to the, the propulsion part, the kick part. Control everything so that you can build, so that you can build uh, the necessary muscles. Rocket decided to join the party. Hi, Rocket. Hi, buddy. He's a good boy. Rocket went to the vet today to have his yearly checkup. He's got a clean bill of health. He's a good dog. He's a happy dog. He's such a good boy. That is not a stuffed animal. That is a dog. Hi, Rocket. Rhea says hi. Good question though, Rhea, thank you. Hopefully I answered your question. Take it slowly, control the kick, you'll build the muscles that are needed to support your ligaments and uh, your joints, and then you can kick a lot stronger and build that muscle. Patricia says hi, Rocket. You're saying you're being you're being greeted from Massachusetts tonight, my man. That's incredible. Here you are in Texas. Isn't the internet great? It allows me to be an online coach for people, buddy. He's like, all he hears is wah, 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 like from Charlie Brown. Wah, 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 rocket, wah, 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 rocket. That's what he hears. <clears throat> People ask me if I named the company after the dog or if I named the dog after the company. And the answer is I named the dog after the company 
but I named the company after uh, my own nickname, Johnny Rocket. Yeah, kind of just went all in on the on the name, kind of embraced it. Um, when the questions come in, I'll answer them, but when they're not in, I'm going to be doing some work here, getting my my week set. Mondays are actually my only day off, so even though I do these live stream on Monday nights, I'm still technically working on my Mondays, but it's my chance to get ahead of scheduling and creating time for editing videos, things like that, as well as family time. I do a lot of FaceTiming with my family because I'm one of six kids, so. There's always people FaceTiming. I cannot believe we're less than a week from Halloween. I do not have a Halloween costume yet, nor does Rocket. We were thinking about going as Batman and Robin, where he would be Batman and I would be Robin. We thought that would be funny. What is everybody else going for as Halloween, huh? What's everybody else going for as Halloween? Hmm. <laughs> this one. Uh, I want to ask some brush stroke. Well, I tried to answer your question. Did it not answer your question? I think that was a new comment. That was not a new comment. Okay. <clears throat> I think I'm going to go as a samurai. Ha! <laughs> nice. That's awesome. That's so cool. That's such a great idea, actually. Samurais are pretty cool. Can't say swear words on my mind. Do fins increase the chances of getting cramps? Yes. Fins do increase the chances of getting cramps because they're, <clears throat> they're targeting a muscle group with more weight. So think about all the muscles that need to be engaged for a freestyle kick the downward and upward motion, right? Now, think about putting weight onto the end of your foot, like it's like literally taping weight to your foot, sandbags to your foot. That's what your muscles are having to then produce power for um, when you're putting fins on because fins kick more water, so more surface area means more weight, so your, your legs are working harder. So therefore, you need to drink more water when you're using fins and Gatorade or any sort of drink with uh, electrolytes in it and stretch before and after you use the fins and take breaks don't use the fins maybe for an hour straight that's probably a great way to get cramps so maybe 10 minutes on five minutes off something like that just uh, like everything in life moderation is key
Great question, thank you. Ask me anything live stream. I'm your online coach. I'm working here until I get a question. Just so I can stay on longer and be more productive as well. We'll probably go for one or two hours. Where are we? 22 minutes? Nice. All right, guys, ask me anything live stream. There's eight of you out there. Come on now. Somebody's got to have a question. Why aren't those messages sending? Make a rocket channel where you play with rocket. <laughs> you guys want me to play with rocket? <laughs> I can play with rocket. We can play with rocket. Hey, rocket, you want to play? You want to do some play? Should we play on the on the couch or on the floor? He's allowed up on this couch because this couch is a nobody sits on a couch. So you collect things from the house couch.
here. Yep. No. No. Up here. Come on. You can think. You can think. Up here. What's that? Now everybody can see you. Yeah, everybody can see you. That's a good boy. You want to get the glove? You want to get the glove? Right. So, would you guys subscribe to a channel where I just play with Rocket? <laughs> Maybe I should just post more of them on Instagram. Got some good photos of Rocket, actually. Isn't that true, buddy? I have some clients who will take pictures of Rocket while they're getting the their lesson, and then they send them to me. Those are awesome. Mm -hmm. so like, All right, buddy. You should probably go take a nap again. It's got to work. It's a good dog. He's cute. He is cute. He's one and a half now, I think. Great dog. He does get a little barky sometimes. But I learned out today the fact that that's part of his breed. Okay, so this never said. That's ridiculous. Life of Rocket, where we see his day's routine. <laughs> A swimming rocket channel instead of rocket swimming, a swimming rocket channel. Clever. Interesting. If you're just joining this live stream, it's an Ask Me Anything live stream. I am working in the background to stay productive while I live stream so that we can do this more often. Because right now, we're not getting enough love in the super chat for me to just devote all my time to a live stream. Crazy with that hat. I can't see what I'm typing in. What are some tips for increasing? What are some tips for increasing speed? Ah, speed work, eh? So if you're trying to increase your speed, the first thing you got to be wary of is not just spinning your arms faster or moving, um, moving your stroke cycle quicker. That's usually not the answer. First, make sure you're getting enough uh, water with each arm pull and each kick by slowing down the stroke, making sure you have, you're getting as much power and pull with every arm pull and every kick, and then 
once you're you know more coordinated with each kick you can begin increasing the power of the kick so or the power of the pole it's usually not how fast you can move your hands it's usually how effective your pole is and how many pounds of pressure you're putting on the water so you want to be pulling and putting hard pressure on the water when you pull in order to go faster then once you're effective that way as well you can start thinking about moving the hand speed <clears throat> So that's one way to increase uh, your speed. Um, the second way would be to do some short, fast sprints over time and things like that. So like if you're training 50s, you could do one fast too easy, or you could do the first lap of every, 20, of every 50 fast and then come back easy. Whoa, coughing, huh? You all right? So speed training like, uh, going fast for a short period of time and then getting lots of rest or lots of recovery swim be between those fast sprints. Those are the two best ways to increase your speed. Also just doing a lot of short, fast kicking too. That also is good. I hope that answers your question. I have definitely made the fast arms mistake. Yes, we all do. Same with the fast feet. Fast feet's usually not as detrimental as fast arms. That just wears you out without actually making good progress. Someone asked best technique for breathing for a self-teaching beginner. Best technique for breathing. All right. Um, if you're trying to ultimately learn how to breathe to the side, it's a process. It's a process. You have to take your time, you have to be patient with yourself, learn each step. Know that if you learn the first step that that doesn't necessarily mean all your problems are done and they're gone. Keep following the pattern and the instruction. I have a breathing video that I'm gonna ask Neeraj, who's watching this live stream, to please put in the chat. <clears throat> it's a video on the freestyle breath and the steps that you need to take in order to be successful at it. Essentially, Make sure you're blowing your bubbles out in the water, your air out in the water, exhaling in the water, and then breathing into the side or breathing in front of you to start. But don't mix the two up. Some people <laughs> breathe in water because they're not used to the pattern. So first, you gotta do some bobs. That's where you just stand in place and you kind of go up, breathe in, go underwater, blow the air out. Come up, breathe in, go underwater, blow the air out. They're called bobs because you're bobbing up and down like a, a bobber on a fisher's hook, uh, a line. So <clears throat> start with that. Once you get good at that pattern of breathing out in the water, in above the water, breathe out underwater, breathe in above the water. Then you'll want to do some freestyle strokes where you roll onto your back. I call it the pineapple. Um, there's a history there that we can go into another time or maybe I can tell you a video or like make a video about why I call it the pineapple but it's definitely one of my most famous like trademark moves and that is you're tired because that's what most beginners like to do even though that's not how you swim long long term you start off swimming as many strokes as you can do without a breath when you need that breath you roll on to back and breathe on your back as much as you need to to recover and until you're ready to go back to your stomach but you can hang out here on your back do some light paddles and kicks down by your legs just to keep yourself moving because things in motion tend to stay in motion and your body stays higher in the water when you're moving if you come to a complete stop on your back you're going to sink and then there's going to be water that goes over your face and you're going to panic so i recommend um going on your belly for a few strokes roll into your back Keep kicking, keep paddling on your back. You don't have to lift your arms up in the air when you're on your back because that's just going to sink you underwater. So keep your arms underwater, paddles and kicks on your back until you can catch your breath and then go back to your belly by taking one arm stroke across your body. That's how you get good at 
incorporating the breath into freestyle. Now, the next step from there would be to do a half pineapple. Thanks, Neeraj, for putting that link in the chat. There's the link to the swimming video. I'm sorry, the breathing to the side video that I was just talking about. So let's talk about now putting it into your freestyle stroke. When you put it in the actual stroke, you can take a few strokes and then when it's time to breathe, stick one arm out and do a half pineapple. A half pineapple is just onto your side. So you're keeping one arm in front, okay? There's a step you can do in between this where you keep your arm out front as you continue rolling onto your back and then rolling back with that arm extended, but most people can jump straight to that third step, which is half pineapple. Extend your arm, roll onto your side, take a few breaths until you're satisfied, and then come back in with the other arm stroke. But one arm needs to stay out in front to balance your body while you do that. While your arm's out there, go ahead and put your ear on your shoulder. Try to keep one goggle in the water with one goggle out. You can put one goggle in the water and keep one goggle out and have your entire mouth out of the water. It is possible. You just gotta breathe like a pirate, okay? So you're breathing on your side like this. You breathe in and that creates, um, or that gets you your breath so that you can finish the stroke. Then from there, you would go one breath at a time. Practice one breath at a time. So you, or one inhale. So you're swimming, you're swimming, you stick your arm out, one breath, and then you go. So you don't stay there until you've caught your breath. You only get one breath and you keep going. And you swim, 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 one breath, swim, swim, swim. From there, you'll wanna now start increasing the frequency in which you breathe, at which you breathe. So you'll want to go um, probably once every three or four strokes at first because it's hard to just breathe a bunch. At first, you kind of want to do a bunch of strokes and really think about the breath and put all your energy, all your thought into that breath. And that's okay at first, but you got to get past that point fairly quickly. So you're putting all that thought into that one breath. You get the one breath. You put your face back in the water. You swim until you get tired. Try that out. Eventually, like I said, start with three or four strokes between breaths at that point, then decrease it to two or three, and then the minimum is two, but that's also, in my opinion, like the max for everyone. You don't need to be breathing every three strokes or every four strokes um, if you're recreationally swimming. The only time I would encourage a swimmer uh, to not breathe every two strokes is if they're swimming a 100 freestyle or a 50 freestyle. Some swimmers are starting to breathe every three or four strokes in the 400 freestyle. I don't love that yet. I still think you need the oxygen. Um, I'm not sure what kind of training that those swimmers are doing to be able to have lungs that last the entire race, but that's not where any of us are at. That's not the level of, of most of the swimmers that are asking these questions, right? Because they're not Olympic athletes. But anyway, it's very helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. So decrease it to two strokes. Eventually you want to be one, two, one, two. You want to be breathing to the same side. Pick your favorite side. You'll definitely know which side you do better on breathing. For me, it's my right side. So I breathe to my right side every time I stroke with my right arm, okay? There are so many more tips in that video though about front quadrant swimming and things like that that will help that breath come easier to you. So I really encourage you to watch that video. I wasn't able to, to touch on every point here. And eventually in the future, there's gonna be even more specific videos on these things because we're taking down subscriber requests, taking surveys and finding out exactly what people want most so we can maximize our time and energy on the right content. For now, you're just getting a, um, just a variety of different content from the lessons that I teach to collect the content.
No arguments, please. That's a funny username. It says, hi, hello. Ask me anything you want, swimming related. I'm your swim coach here to answer your questions. Would you recommend snorkels for beginners? I do recommend snorkels for beginners. Um, I like snorkels. They get a swimmer comfortable having their face in the water for an extended period of time. A lot of adults, beginner, adult beginners do not like putting their face in the water. Um, it's one of the reasons why they haven't learned to swim extensively yet or why they're having to relearn to swim. So having a snorkel at the beginning can be very helpful as you learn the stroke and and learn to be comfortable in the water as you swim and learning how the water works and how you have to pull it backwards and kick it backwards in order to move forwards. So snorkel can be very productive. Um, it's hard to find any sort of equipment that would be detrimental for you um, unless you're trying to kick brushstroke with fins. That's not good for your joints in the long term. So yeah, I, I like experimenting with equipment and if you find something you like, that's okay to stick with that. It's not like you have to end up the perfect swimmer like the Michael Phelps or something. It's okay to like enjoy swimming because you get to use it because you, you, you use a snorkel. That's okay, that's great, that's awesome. Uh, I still use a snorkel from time to time when I swim recreationally for exercise. Oh, okay, next question. I stopped swimming. I was trying to teach myself with a swimming noodle and a small board. Uh, was a swimming noodle to hold your hips up at the surface better? Because that's a trick I've used before as well. And it can work. Um, usually your hips are sinking because you're, you're either kicking with your legs too stiff or you're kicking with your feet flexed. So it's kind of moving you backwards. You've got to let your feet be loose and floppy um, or even pointed toes. Pointed toes is better than flexed feet kicking in the water like that. I guess it would look like this, kicking in the water like that. Um, but under my armpits, yeah, okay, wow. Oh, well, no wonder your hips are sinking. That's a lot of things up here keeping you up. But um, I like the kickboard, just put your head down on the kickboard to keep, keep to get your legs back up to the surface and to keep your hips up if they're sinking. Uh, otherwise, you can keep your head up and breathe. That does make kicking harder. Keeping your head up is pushing your body down. So when you kick with your head up, it technically is harder on your legs than having your head down. But it's obviously more comfortable because you can breathe. Some people don't like that pain in the neck and they'd rather put their head down. Some people embrace having to hold their breath for periods of time. So it's okay, whichever method you use is fine. Um, if you wanna keep your legs up higher, just put your head down on the board every once in a while or between your arms and the board, that kind of thing. Um, let me go back with the question. I was trying to teach myself with a swimming noodle on a small board. There's a lot you can do. So keep your, keep your feet loose and floppy on the kickboard. Kick small and fast. So that'll keep your feet up at the surface. Keep momentum moving. Keep your arms out front. Keep your legs stretched out back. Always be stretching as much as you can out front and out back so that you create the most surface area and the longest spine and the longest body line. Because the longer and more taut you are, the higher you stay in the water, the faster you go because there's more muscles engaged when you're stretched out. So the faster you go, the more pounds of pressure you can put on the water, the better your technique, the more hydrodynamic you'll be. It's just best. So stretch out. You got to be thinking, I'm going to stretch from my fingertips to the heavens, to the sky, my toes down to the dirt, the earth. You're stretching your body out in the water from end to end. Okay, hello, please help with tips for treading water. I have been trying for a while and haven't gotten it yet. Okay, yeah, of course, treading water can be tricky. It's, it's very difficult, 
coordinated exercise. If you've been with me for a while, you know that I'm not a huge treading water fan. I don't like teaching it. I don't like it as what most people think it is, which is they think it's some sort of survival skill. Um, in my opinion, the only thing treading water is good for is socialization, being able to talk with your friends while you tread in place. Um, it does not have very good survival benefits, and I'll tell you why. It's exhausting. It's exhausting to be treading water, so you're draining your energy too fast, waiting for help. So I recommend floating on your back, getting on your back, taking deep breaths, keeping your lungs with the air, light paddles, light kicks. That's a very relaxed motion that you can continue for more than a day if you had to. So you can, it's, plus now your head's up the whole time. There's water, or air here, not water. Sometimes when you're treading water, your chin's right here on the water. So it's, you choke on water a lot. Up here, it's a lot safer because of the water lines back by your ears. So you can breathe clean air more. As long as you keep that chin up and not look down at your feet, look backwards, look backwards. Allow yourself to be upside down, it's safer. So it's a little disorienting, but embrace it, get good at it, practice it. And from here, you can call for help, 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 help. You can raise an arm real quick. Don't keep your arm up and wait for help because that'll sink your body. But if you are gonna try and tread water for socialization or because you're trying to pass a test or you've always just wanted to spend on your bucket list, now I'll begin teaching you that. When you're treading water, you're doing an egg beater kick. An egg beater kick is a one-footed breaststroke kick. So your legs take turn, take turns, reaching out, foot reaching out and trapping water back into the center of your body line. So you're pulling water in with the inside of your shins and the inside of your knees and the inside of your ankles, the inside of your feet. You're pulling that in and downwards. You're pressing that, mo that water, redirecting it downwards to keep you up. Now, what most people then, uh, where most people go wrong then is they start tipping backwards or they try to like stand up in the water. Don't do that. Make yourself a ball. The smaller you are, the easier it is for you to float. If you're stretched out, up and down, now earlier I said stretch out to stay higher, and that's if you're horizontal. But if you're vertical, stretching up and down like that is not as good of an idea because that'll sink you. So get into a ball and lean forward. That's always the piece of advice I give that people go, that's what helped me. That was the key. Once you said lean forward, it became so much easier for me. I'll do a video on treading water soon. Um, I know Mike Kolber from Nitro, I don't know if he's still uploading um, videos, but he had a great video on treading water and yours truly made it. I uh, filmed it and edited it and produced it for him uh, while, during my time at Nitro, great time at Nitro. But he's got a great video on treading water. I'll make one soon because I know we've been getting some requests about it. Um, so that's what you do with the legs, right? You keep them kind of bunched up knees bent up into your chest or your stomach, more like your stomach, chest might be a little bit extreme. Up into your stomach, doing the kick, not extending your legs all the way down underneath you because that would be like standing up in the water. Lean forward, and now with your arms, you're frosting a cake or directing a choir, whatever you wanna call it. But what you're doing is you're going outwards on an angle, pressing the water outwards on an angle and downwards, and then doing the same inward so downward outward inward outward inward but you got to let your hands be loose and somewhat strong a little bit sturdy but not tense you got to be relaxed a little bit sturdy with your hands if you're doing it right two things will happen one your hands will get sore over time that means they're actually doing the pressing of the water that they're supposed to okay so if your hands aren't getting sore you're probably not doing it right you're probably your hands probably aren't relaxed enough Secondly, if you do it right, you'll see whirlpools that will form at the surface of the water just over your forearms. And that's if you're really good at it. If you're an expert at directing the water downwards, um, whirlpools will form over your forearms. I'll show you in the video. You guys will be like, that's so cool. Um, if you try it for yourself and you find it works, take a video of it or get someone to take a video of it and send it to me. That stuff is lit. I will put it on our Instagram or something. Um, such a cool trick. Uh, my high school swim coach taught me that. I guess he was teaching us water polo at the time, though, because there's a lot of treading water and water polo. So that's what you're doing with your arms in sync together. Same with the legs. Well, no, I'm sorry, not same thing with the legs. The legs go one at a time. The arms go together. Geez, no wonder that's such an inefficient way to survive. Man, it's too uncoordinated. It's just too much. Blech. 
All right, next question. I had lessons and could swim when I was a, kid. a friend. I went to the deep end thinking drowned. Wow, that is tragic. I'm so sorry to hear that. And obviously, um, for our, our audience, he didn't drown and die because he wouldn't have been able to ask this question. He probably had a near drowning experience which is terrifying. People, some people don't recover from that. They don't ever recover uh, from that and go back in the water. They'll just stay away from water the rest of their lives. And that's sad. And I'm sorry when people have those experiences, that's rough. Always respect the water, for sure. Um, and of course, you were a kid. There's no way you could have known that or had that lesson or that wisdom or that knowledge that you now have because of the experience. Um, but I have learned that knowledge is learning from your own experiences and wisdom is learning from others experiences so knowledge is like oh man i did something i screwed up and i won't do that again because i've learned my lesson wisdom is saying hmm, that other person did something or someone older much wiser than me told me about a similar experience they did so they had a similar situation Therefore, I'm not going to put myself in a similar situation to have the same outcome. I'm going to put myself in a different situation and go the right way. Um, that's wisdom. But anyways, why was I telling you? Oh, because when you're a kid, you, you're usually gaining that wisdom um, and knowledge, doing a lot of learning. So always respect water and never assume you can swim if it's been more than a few months without lessons or a year. I don't know. Actually, that's a great, it's an interesting social experiment is how long can a beginner swimmer go before they need to relearn basic water safety skills and techniques. <clears throat> okay, I used the swimming noodle under my armpits. Yeah, I saw that earlier. I don't think you could forget how to swim. Um, I don't know. Oh, he said, I didn't think you could forget how to swim. Yeah, I guess you can. Um, for me, I don't know if I will ever be able to forget how to swim just because I did it from age four through, competitively, through age 20 or 21. I think it's 21. So, yeah, it's 21. So, I don't know. Um, I can't necessarily put myself in your shoes and know what that's like. I will always remember how to swim. I just go through the motions when I jump in the water. It's so natural for me. It feels like uh, my second habitat, you know, like but sometimes land feels foreign, you know, obviously I'm exaggerating, but it's, uh, it, the more time you spend in the water, the more you'll grow to love it and be one with the water. It's, it's a beautiful place to be so relaxing, so easy on your back and your spine. There's so much less gravity in water. Okay, got a couple questions. Thanks, I'll practice that technique. I am going to rely on the back floating water treading in the ocean. Bet, that's a good idea. Uh, Kevin says, what is the best stroke you can use in the ocean? The best stroke you can use in the ocean is backstroke and freestyle. Uh, I would say backstroke and breaststroke. I would say breaststroke before freestyle. Backstroke because you can breathe. Um, the only trouble with backstroke is you can't always see where you're going. So you might have to turn onto your belly every once in a while and see where you're going. And that's when I would do breaststroke because you can keep your head up the whole time when swimming breaststroke or the brush. If you do the legal breaststroke competitive stroke, you're still breathing on every stroke cycle. So it's a very safe stroke that allows you to keep breathing. Um, if you're trying to like go fast, have fun, you're a great swimmer, you're strong. I like to ride waves into the, into the sand, but that can be dangerous because I've definitely like hit the sandbar with my upper back once, you know, and that could have easily just been my head. It could have snapped and I could have died or been paraplegic right then, right there. So, um, it's be very, very confident and a very good swimmer. And when that accident happened and it didn't hurt me at all or whatever, but I was, 15 at the time. I'm now much wiser and better at avoiding that. Um, I like to swim freestyle. I actually like to swim butterfly in the ocean because the ocean is so salty. Butterfly, uh, your butterfly is more buoyant or you're more buoyant. So your butterfly is easier because you stay higher in the water. I once swam like 44, 45 minutes of butterfly straight without stopping. And I didn't feel tired at all. It was amazing. It was very cool. Felt very fun. I love doing butterfly in the ocean. 
All right. Mm, how about going out deeper above your head? Um, obviously, only do it with some lifeguards around, and if you're a competent swimmer and wear a life jacket, uh, that's what I obviously have to say because I can never condone anything that would get somebody harmed or die. Um, and so I, I have to say, respect the water, wear a life jacket in the ocean. Don't go in water above your head. But if you do, <laughs> um, breaststroke and backstroke, some freestyle, I just wouldn't recommend butterfly just because there's no need to exhaust yourself. It's the most inefficient stroke. So even though I was able to do it for 45 minutes, you have to take, understand that I was at a national level swimming um, competitively at one point. So that is like me, or that would be equivalent to like you swimming the freestyle. You could probably do it for 45 minutes in the ocean because you can stay buoyant. Um, but for me, that would be like the same as butterfly. I just don't recommend butterfly for anybody else. Backstroke, breaststroke, those are the safest strokes. Freestyle is the fastest, most efficient stroke. How could you handle a riptide? I don't know, but one time I was the head coach of a club called the Ingemar North Recreational Swim Club, INRC, yeah. And their mascot, the mascot was the riptide. So there's a bit of nostalgia for me. We're almost an hour into this live stream. It's going pretty well so far. We'd love to see some people contribute to the super chat if they are feeling uh, like this is helpful information for them and that they could find this beneficial because eventually, if it is something that helps pay the bills, I will be doing it daily or more, at least more frequently, more often during the week or more hours in the day or have other coaches that are just constantly keeping the live stream going 24 seven. I think that would be the ultimate coolest thing if we could just keep a live stream going that people can chime into from all around the world 24 seven all the time. I think that would be lit. So that's what I'd love to do eventually. But we can't do it unless we can keep it, you know, paying the bills. Also, when I'm swimming, breaststroke, and that moment between the kicking and extending my arms so I can glide, I sometimes feel myself go off balance and roll a little on my side. Okay. Okay, I think I understand what's happening. If you have a video of yourself swimming that, I'd love for you to send it to me in an email. My, my email's up here, hi there in this live chat. Um, and I could actually help you. I know one of our subscribers did text me on WhatsApp some videos of himself swimming from Nigeria. And so he and I have been talking now and I'm gonna do a, a FaceTime with him where he and I will just talk about his, the ways he, he can improve and I'm gonna write some sets for him and keep him accountable and things like that. So if that's something you guys are interested in, that's a service I offer. And I would love to do that for you. This is, this needs to be more my subscribers need to know that this is more of a community channel than my other older work. This is more of a, um, I'm here for you, let's do this. There's no reason why me in Texas can't be your coach in Nigeria. There's no reason. We're all online these days, everything's done online. If you can get someone to film you, I can be your coach. And you don't have to like film a whole lesson, just film a couple laps. And at, at each FaceTime that we have, I tell you then what to go on and film for the next time. But let me answer your question here. Uh, when you swim pressure, you feel like you're going off balance. So here's what's happening, I think. You're probably coming up for your breath too high. So you're coming almost vertical in the water. And when you're that, when you're like that, you're not balanced. So it would be easier to tip back and forth, forward and backward, side to side. Any kind of tipping would become easier up here. So you want to just barely pick your head up enough for a breath. Don't pull so wide and pull so far down to lift up. 
try pulling yourself forward into your breath. Pull forward, not up, okay? That way you'll stay more at the surface because what goes up must come down. So if you keep coming up really high, you're gonna keep sinking down really high and having to come up higher for a breath and then you're gonna sink lower and then have to come up even higher for your breath. It's just a bad cycle to get into. So it's better to just, just stay right there at the surface by keep not bringing your head up so high for your breath, just sneaking that breath in. Um, take smaller strokes so that your hands stay out in front. When your hands are in front of your head at all times, even during the pull, if your hands are in front of your head, it's like you're, it's like you're kind of balancing yourself. It's like how they teach you how to fall on a trampoline. It just creates more balance. So you extend your arms out in front, keep them out in front. Even when they're pulling, they never come back past your head. Okay, my hands stay in front of me when I do my breaststroke pull. That keeps me more balanced as well. Um, with the kick, don't bring your knees up underneath your body. Some people, when they do the breaststroke kick, they bring their knees up underneath their stomach rather than what you should do is bring your heels up to your rear end. So when you're lifting your head for your breath, your body comes up like this, that's when your heels come up, okay? And then you kick back and shoot the hands forward at the same time, creating like a dart in the, in the water. So you get your breath, dart forward, get your breath, dart forward. The kick is the propulsion, the arms are the momentum. What could I be doing wrong? I started learning swimming a few months ago. Wow, that's awesome. You should definitely like hit me up on WhatsApp or email me, johnny at rocketswimming.com. And we should, I should help you. I just put my email in the chat and see if it actually works this time. It didn't work earlier. Um, I'm not sure what you could be doing wrong exactly without seeing any video of it or seeing you in person. If you're ever in Austin, Texas, I'd love to get you some lessons. There's also now some people who have, uh, they flew me to Nashville, Tennessee to give their kids and some neighbors some lessons for a week. So that was a cool experience. We can do that too. If you fly me out and host me, I'm there. I will teach you for a whole week or just a few days if it's like over the weekend or something. I just gotta have a pool or access to a pool. You have been very, very helpful. Or, sorry, just one very. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate that. That's very kind of you. I enjoy doing this. We are at one hour and I would like to take a break. I need to use the restroom and I need to uh, refill my water bottle. So since we're at a good stopping place here, we're going to take a break. Nir is probably going to say something like, hey, he'll be right back. Don't leave or whatever. Um, but if you guys need to take a break, you can take a break as well. And I will be right back and we'll continue this for probably another hour. Not, not when I come back. We're going to stop the stream at 10 p.m. my time regardless. So in 53 minutes, yeah, we'll stop the live stream in 53 minutes because 10 p.m. is getting kind of late for me to be working.
All right. Did you miss me? I'm assuming I have trouble rolling side to side and breathing. That's pretty common. Let me answer that for you. When you're rolling side to side to breathe, uh, what would you recommend? When you're rolling side to side to breathe, I recommend uh, resting your arm on your shoulder to, to breathe and getting comfortable like being able to kick like this. So I call it handly kicking. Extend one arm out in front. You lay your head down on, on your arm. You get into some position where you can breathe. And if you have fins on, wear fins, but if you don't, it's okay. And kick like this all the way down the pool. And that'll give you comfortable at being on your side. It's, it's, it's a matter of balancing in the water. Another reason you might be having trouble breathing the side is because you're not keeping an arm extended through the breath. So when oftentimes when beginners swim, they swim from their hips or their pockets. And so when they take a breath, their head's leading the way and it's kind of like coming up and then crashing into the water and it just becomes a hot mess. So instead it's better to swim smooth by keeping your arms out in front, swimming a superhero freestyle back up so I can show you Rocket. So you're swimming from back here, superhero freestyle, one arm at a time, letting the other arm be patient for the original arm that's swimming. And then when you breathe the side, make sure that an arm is extended out front so that um, you're balanced throughout the duration of your breath. Rocket. Come here. All right, so make sure that you're keeping an arm out extended through the breath. Um, take a quick quick breath too, like one breath. If you need more than that, you gotta be good at doing kicking on your side and balancing in the water. Balancing in the water is, a, is achieved by, um, let's see, balance and body line. Balance is achieved by Kicking harder, body line is achieved by keeping your head down and still and stretching longer, right? So balance is achieved by kicking uh, like stronger, but not, that doesn't mean harder and faster. It just means like a little bit bigger, more controlled with the legs. Gotta have a, a stronger um, control of your kick in the water, better control of your kick in the water. So I like uh, drills with fins because fins really make you control your kick in the water. When you take the fins off, try not to lose the amount of uh, volume covered. Try not to lose that that depth. Um, most people, when they take their fins off, their feet you know, can kick a little bit faster. Try to keep a little bit deeper kick, even without the fins. That'll help you with the control. Then, of course, stretch out front. That should help you get your side breath. We have a video regarding it that you can also watch. That was uh, the link's been posted up higher in the live chat that you can go see. My legs, I think, always sink. Ah, then you're definitely not keeping your arms out in front. The reason your legs are sinking, it's time to play demonstrate with Rocket. No, I'm just kidding. Rocket, you can do it down. Um, so, the main reason your legs are probably sinking. <coughs> is because you have um, your head up too high in the water and you're probably swimming from your pockets. So you're probably swimming with your arms down here with no control out front. So if, if you think of your body as quadrants, uh, the front quadrant would be your arms. The second quadrant would be your head to your uh, chest. The third quadrant, quadrant would be from your chest down to your hips and your fourth quadrant would be your legs. Your legs are the biggest, heaviest quadrants, so they're going to tip your body down. That's why everybody's legs sink. Everybody's legs sink. Everybody's legs sink. You need to hear that. And you're, you're not unique. Your legs will sink too. So the best way to keep them up, two ways. Be balanced in the water, balance out the, the legs with the arms. So you're swimming 
like this with your arms out front, being patient for one another so there's always an arm out front balancing out the legs. Second way to keep your legs up is to do light flutter kicking, okay? If you kick too strong, they might come out too high and then you'll get too tired and, and you'll wear out. If they're not kicking at all, you're just dragging them, they might start to sink a little bit. So you do just a little bit of light kicking to keep your feet up. Momentum keeps things up like a boat. When it picks up speed, the front end goes up, the entire boat rises in the water. When things are going faster, they rise. So to keep your legs up, you have to be kicking just enough to keep that momentum from sinking your legs. And when you're kicking water, you're kind of redirecting it, some of it downwards, so your feet keep bouncing up. And that's another thing, that's another video that's gonna be coming soon, is a video where I talk about the, like your feet dancing or bouncing upwards in the water. That'll help keep people's legs up with that mental image of, every time I kick, it's a reaction that brings my foot back up higher to the surface. I'm gonna sit down now so you don't look like half a head the whole time. Whoa! Swim back to the desk. Hope that answered your question. Okay, you're welcome. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. I'm happy to help. I just realized Halloween's on a Sunday this week, so I wonder if they're expecting us to dress up in costumes for church. I think that would be fun. Very interesting, to say the least. I recommend breathing through your mouth or nose, your mouth every time, every day of the week. Several reasons. Your mouth has more control over breathing than your nose does, even if you're a nose breather. You have more control of your mouth. It's, why, it's the reason why you go to your mouth to breathe when you get tired. Uh, the other reason you go to your mouth to breathe when you get tired is because it's a larger cavity. It's a larger hole in your face. You can fit a lot more air in a lot faster than you can with your nose. Plus, the nose passes by the brain. So some people, you know, get like those weird breathe, cold breathing headaches sometimes. Um, and if you're in the water and you're breathing in through your nose and there's droplets of water around and you breathe that up, that's going up near your brain too. And it's going to hurt. It's going to burn. So you just, I like to just leave my nose out of the equation as much as I can when I swim. I like to try and do it all with my mouth, blow out and breathe in. Now, sometimes some water starts to build up in your nasal cavities. So before it gets up too high, I'll take a deep breath in with my mouth and then blow out hard with my nose. I'm really lucky that on a live stream, I didn't just have a bunch of stuff come out, but um, you breathe out with your nose if, if water starts to, to travel its way up your, your nasals, your nasal cavities. Um, but most of the time I'm breathing in and out with my mouth. Okay, thanks, you're welcome. Very helpful. 
beautiful. Of course, no problem, my pleasure. about swimming underwater um how do you mean like what's the best way to swim underwater or should you swim underwater should you swim underwater it's hard to be fast underwater i should say it's hard to be efficient underwater but streamlining is the fastest part of competitive swimming these days so um the the best swimmers in the world are the best streamliners the ones who maximize the distance that they can go underwater. Uh, what stroke underwater? I like breaststroke, breaststroke pullouts. Sometimes I even do a scissor kick, which is one foot is doing a freestyle kick while the other one does a breaststroke kick. I don't know. The fastest way to travel underwater is in a street. So you're going to streamline, you're doing butterfly kicks or freestyle kicks underwater as fast as you can. Um, the tighter you you can keep your streamline and the longer you can keep your body line, your spine by reaching your fingertips forward and your toes backwards, the faster you'll travel in the water. Yeah, so I, I like streamlining as the fastest way to travel underwater, but I like breaststroke with the scissor kick is the most uh, pleasurable way, I guess, to travel underwater. These are great questions that keep coming from you, Kevin. I appreciate your... Uh... Sorry, I appreciate your uh, participation in tonight's live stream. You're welcome. When you swim underwater with the breaststroke, do you glide, then use your arms, and then kick with a frog kick? I don't know. Um, yeah, I do pull like this, but I pull way past farther than what a breaststroke stroke would be legally. Breaststroke stroke is small. It should not go past your shoulders. Um, and it definitely can't go down past your hips or you'll get disqualified. I think it's past your belly button you get disqualified. So, um, I... Don't swim breaststroke that way. I swim breaststroke legally. But underwater, when I'm traveling underwater, I like to take big, big pulls all the way down to my thighs every time because it's more fun to like feel that resistance smushing your face. But like I said, that's more pleasurable. If you're trying to go fast, you'd want to do a streamline or you'd want to do, yeah, smaller strokes, uh, smaller breaststroke pulls underwater. 
um, an either a freestyle kick or a butterfly kick or a breaststroke kick. It really depends on what your preference is. For instance, I don't like the breaststroke kick. My hips aren't that flexible. Um, and it's no wonder that I do the scissor kick. The freestyle part of my scissor kick is my left leg, which is less flexible than my right leg. So it all is just because my body is, you know, not perfectly symmetrical. So different strokes, different folks. Different folks, different strokes. Those I definitely don't have any hard, fast opinions on. I think it's okay to experiment for yourself and do what you enjoy. The older I get in my life, the more I realize you should definitely just do what you enjoy when you swim. Unless you're training for like a triathlon or something, then you definitely need some training and guidance. Could you repeat again? Ooh, repeat which part? Um, thanks, you're welcome. When I swim underwater with breaststroke, I don't do full big, or I mean, I do full big strokes, which is not technically regular breaststroke. Oh man, this is the only problem with live streams is I can't really understand which part you want me to repeat, but I can try to repeat the whole thing. Um, when you are swimming underwater, when I'm swimming underwater, I do the breaststroke motion, technically, but I don't do a legal version of breaststroke. I pull way, way, way too big for what breaststroke calls for. I pull all the way down to my thighs. I do a scissor kick, so my, my body isn't perfectly symmetrical. And I said you should do what you enjoy in life. The older I get, the more I realize you, you should do what you enjoy when you swim, when you exercise, um, because being in the water is awesome. It's, it's, a, it's definitely a luxury most people don't have. So I think you should do what you enjoy, unless you're training for a triathlon or a big event or competition then you do need some direct coaching and some strict training. You're welcome. I like the idea of floating on your back in the ocean. Yeah, it's very peaceful. Sometimes the waves can be a bit big, so the water will kind of dance over your face a little bit. So you have to be comfortable, cool, calm, and collected, experienced swimmer to not panic and to enjoy it thoroughly. But yeah, it's very peaceful. I've laid in the ocean before and felt very good because the salt water just boosts you right up and you kind of feel like you're laying on a pillow. Um, yeah, great. Great experience. Love swimming in the ocean. Probably my favorite place to swim. I did an ocean swim in Hawaii once. That was so beautiful. I remember the, them telling you not to look at the fish and the coral underneath the water as you swim because it can be distracting. And I was like, okay, that's I'm not going to do it. Uh, but as soon as I, the race started, I was like, oh, it's so cool. I don't care. I'm going to look. This is a once-in-a-lifetime kind of thing. I'm going to look. So I looked around, finished, ooh, I think, third in my category, in my age group. Yeah, there are two people ahead of me. It was fun, it was so much fun. survival technique yeah very much so don't try to tread water in the ocean 
for survival. You should float on your back. No doubt. Have you ever tried scuba diving and would you recommend? I've never tried scuba diving, but I've been told I would love it. I will at some point in my life. I'm around water enough. Um, I'm the kind of person who's not, doesn't need to do and try everything. I'm very content in my life. I'm very happy with a um, pretty relaxed lifestyle. And although everybody tells me that I work so hard, and I don't know, I like, I balance my work life well with my personal life, my relaxing time, and um, I do some traveling and I do some hanging out with friends weekly, so. But I spend the most time with my family, um, even though it's on FaceTime, because I don't live near any of them anymore. And uh, spend time with my roommates, my dog, then some friends, coworkers, things like that. So I don't really have a lot of coworkers anymore. <laughs> my coworkers are more like the people who work for me. So, but maybe they're just laughing at the jokes because they have to, who knows. Wait, did I, oh, so do I recommend it? Yeah, I do recommend it. I think everybody should try it. It's, it's such a cool, I'm sure it's such a cool experience. I mean, the f <laughs> having watched people scuba dive, it looks awesome. How often do I swim a week? Ooh, depends on the, Season depends on the stage in life. Um, I would say right now at my stage in life, once a week. But there have been times, and there are times that are coming soon, like next spring, where I'll be swimming four to four to five times a week. I'll probably swim every day of the week. Maybe I'll skip Wednesday. I like to skip one day in the middle and then add it onto the end. So I'll probably do four days, like Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, the only reason I wouldn't swim is only because I've been around water my entire life. That doesn't mean I'm sick of water. It just means it's not always my first go-to. It's like if I'm exercising, I'd rather go to the gym, like weightlift or basketball or something. Do something like I like rock climbing, um, hiking, kayaking. I know kayaking still in the water, but it's not the same as swimming. <laughs> I swam so many yards, I was a miler, I was a distance swimmer, and so I've done a lot of yardage in my life, um, not always like thinking about, oh, I want to do more yardage this week, that's just not who I am. Um, I do love, when I get in, I do love just swimming though for like 60 minutes without stopping. I still got that distance blood where I just prefer to keep going without, without stopping. Um, so sometimes when I first get back in the water, I have to do a bunch of 25s or 50s to ease into it because my body's not as young as it used to be. So you can't guarantee you're not going to injure yourself the first time back in the water because my stroke is so efficient and powerful. I can really put a, a, a lot of pounds of pressure on the water. And so it's really stressful on my muscles, probably more so even though my technique is good, it's more stressful on my muscles and joints when I hop back in the water after a long period of time because... I'm putting a lot of pounds of pressure on the water. So I've, I have injured myself by jumping back in the water too quickly and trying to go too far and things like that. So I pace myself um, whenever I start back heavy yardage. I would like to swim a little distance. What would you recommend? Oh, awesome. Um, I would recommend doing uh, 10 minutes of 25s. So just one lap of the pool. And then do about five minutes of 50s, five minutes of 75s, 10 minutes of 100s. 
Next time you go to the pool, start at 50s. So 50s for 10 minutes, 75s for five, 100s for five, and then 150 for 10 minutes. And then uh, you need to start stepping up to like 45 minute practices or 40 minute practices, then 45, then a 60 or something like that, 50, 55. You, if you wanna take baby steps, I love taking baby steps. I love going from 30 to 35 to 40 to 45, to 50, 55, 60 over weeks. Um, <clears throat> But eventually you're gonna to have to increase the time that you do it because you're gonna be swimming longer distances. But that'll definitely give you um, variety within your your practice session as well as increase the distance and stamina. At one point, at some point, you're gonna find out your your the most you can do in a single practice. It'll probably be swimming nonstop for like an hour or something, let's say. Um, Maybe it's not that ambitious, maybe it's 30 minutes, which is fine. Eventually though, you're gonna find your limit and then you gotta start back at the beginning and you'll feel stronger and it's healthy for your joints to back off and take that macro cycle break um, and then start creating the micro cycles to get back up to that point and maybe beyond it and then back off again. So never, ever, ever, we're not always just constantly climbing up, up. Our body needs breaks too, we need to give it a break. So I like micro cycles and macro cycles. Is the key to relax when you swim? Wait, what would you recommend? Oh, what do I recommend is the key to relax when you swim? Um, control of your breath, just like anything in life. Um, if you can control your breath and you can kind of control your your nerves, your emotions. Um, if you've that, you know, when people get mad, what do they say? You know, step back, take a breath, count to 10, whatever. When kids are crying, what do you say? Breathe, breathe, right? When uh, you're running, you gotta breathe. When you're doing yoga, you know, which is all about being aware of your body in, in time and space and how your muscles are tight or versus like stretching them out, breathing oxygen into them, rejuvenating your body. It's all about the breath. They're always telling you to focus on the breath, right? When, you, when you're going through physical therapy, it's about the breath. So I think the key, the best key to being able to relax when you swim is knowing how to control your breath and being aware of that. So doing some meditating daily will definitely help doing some bobs in the water, doing some doing some turns from belly to back, or like I call them pineapples, where you turn over from your belly to your back, getting used to that kind of what it's like to hold my breath for a while and then take some breaths. How long does it take me to catch my breath and for my heart rate to come down and for me to feel comfortable to put my face back in the water again? Learn that about yourself, find out, and then start stretching those boundaries, you know, pushing them a little bit, setting new standards, raising the bar. Should your hips hurt after breaststroke? I'm new learning this, things, I, am I doing this wrong? If your hips are hurting after breaststroke, a couple things could be going on. I'd have to see a video of it, so I would really love for you to, to email me a video. I'll put my email in here, even though none of these comments have been showing up from my iPad. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see if that email shows up. None of my comments have been showing up, so I don't know why. But maybe if uh, I log in as Rocket Swimming, it'll help for some reason. Okay, well, I'm doing this myself. I would love for you to shoot me an email or a text message on WhatsApp of uh, you swimming so I can analyze it and let you know how to let you know if it's because you have bad technique or let you know if it's just because you're still strengthening those muscles but that's where I was gonna head anyway so two things could be happening one you could have such bad technique that you're causing harm to your own hips and that's usually if you're bringing your knees up underneath your tummy instead of lifting your heels to your rear end letting your glutes and your hamstrings which are much bigger muscles letting them do the work um, so if your hips are hurting, the other thing you could be doing is trying to force your feet too wide into some sort of splits that you can't actually do. So be aware of that. I'm not trying to get my feet as wide as I can on every breaststroke kick. I am in a way because I can control it. 
you don't seem to be propelling in the water after kicking hard. You might be kicking too fast. So some people just like try to do a bunch of breaststroke kicks. You need to be able to, <clears throat> you need to be able to squeeze your legs together and let the propulsion shoot your body forward. So you need to relax a little bit in the water and let the, let your body be uh, an object in motion, right? So you're stretching the kickboard forward or you're stretching your hands forward and you're doing a kick that pushes you forward and then you ride that momentum, bring your heels back up to your end, do another kick, ride the momentum and like glide on each kick. Enjoy, embrace the glide. It's very important. Um, so your hips could be hurting because you're doing the wrong technique. You're stretching out too wide. I can stretch my feet out as wide as I can on every kick within, within reason um, because I can control it a lot better just because I'm experienced. But there's another way or there's another reason your hips might be hurting. That is because those muscles and those joints may not be um, strong enough to do the amount of work you're asking it to do yet. Maybe you need to back off a little bit on some of the intensity on your breaststroke kick until your your hip muscles and the supporting muscles. What people don't understand is all your joints have not only big muscles surrounding them nearby, but tiny support muscles that are that are just overworked and burned out because you're moving your joints too much and putting too much pressure on them, or for too much too too long of a time with pressure on them. So. You got to slow down, let those tiny muscles develop, <clears throat> do some exercise away from the pool too. That often will help d develop different muscles that can then be used when you get in the pool to, to, to help out the supporting muscles you've hurt until they can gr rest and grow and, and get stronger. Um, <clears throat> but I always am, am trying to tell people without without being a quitter, you gotta hold, you gotta hold back and know your limits and know what's going to hurt and what's safe. And you got to take things slowly and step by step, have patience. I feel like far too often people quit whatever they're trying to do because of the pain and because of, of the annoying, uh, or the feeling like I can't succeed or I'm not getting it right or something. You got to go easier on yourself. You got to take baby, um, smaller steps and increase over a longer period of time, you'll enjoy it better anyway. Anyways, I noticed the retention of my swimmers went way up when I wrote a curriculum that had review as the thing we did after warm up in every single practice. We reviewed a certain amount of concepts and then we started over and with new concepts and reviewed only these ones, right? We had four rounds. So I loved the, the retention I got from my swimmers year after year. They progressed so much faster after they, um, after they did all this review. So go easier on yourself, take small steps, let yourself recover, try to have the right breaststroke kicking technique. I know that's hard to just tell you. I'll do a breaststroke kicking video. I might already have one, I'm not positive, but I'll do one if we don't <clears throat> um, to help you out there with the right technique. Send me a video though. Send me a video to johnnyrocketswimming.com. That's right, I logged in as myself. Let's see if I can do this. Johnny uh, Rocket Swimming. Dot com. There we go. Finally. Got a, well, at least I think it worked. Sheesh. Is swimming good for your brain? Hey, Daniel, that's my brother. Finally, my own comment worked. Okay, I got some comments to catch up on here, so let me do that. We're only going to go for about 15 more minutes, guys. I know some people around the world are just now waking up and joining, and they got some questions. I'm going to try and get to everyone. Um... How do I deal with the issue when water gets into my ear and hurts? Okay, if water is getting in your ear and is hurting, you likely already have an ear infection. So I would wear some earplugs, go to a doctor, get some drops, things like that. Um, they also sell some over-the-counter ear drops that might be able to take care of the solution. But if it's hurting, it sounds like you need to go to the doctor and get some get a prescription. But if you are, uh, if you're mistaking pain for uncomfortable feeling, like some people have in their ear when they get water in their ear, they just don't like that unfamiliar foreign feeling and they just, ugh, that, and they interpret it as pain. If that's the case, just wear some earplugs um, or get used to it or do this where you create a suction that pulls the water out or slightly, you know, use, 
do a dab in your head, on the side of your neck to get the water to drop out um, every once in a while. That's what I do. Whenever I notice it's really clogged in there, I'll just get a couple of those, just pops right out. Um, you can also just use your finger, just don't dig in too deep, don't dig in too deep with your, your um, tips, Q-tips. And then uh, moving forward, get some sort of swim ear solution that they sell at convenience stores over the counter. Uh, it's called swim ear or aero dry, something like that. Um, but you can also make it with vinegar and rubbing alcohol at home. Uh, it's like a teaspoon of each or something like that, or a tablespoon of each. You pour that into your ear, let it sit there for 30 seconds to a minute, and then you dump it out, it dries, it pulls the moisture and dries it, and um, you'll feel so much better after that. But beware, it does, your ears do smell like alcohol for a little bit, like rubbing alcohol. Water gets in my ears and hurts and itchy. Yeah, if it's itchy, you want to you want to try and dry your ears out every night with some sort of solution so that you're not creating a buildup of bacteria. Yeah, Daniel says keep dry and clean vinegar and alcohol. Exactly, like I said, vinegar and alcohol. If you want to do it at home, they also sell these in bottle that solution in bottles already. They're super dirt cheap, over the counter. Um, I have one in my backpack that I keep with me that I haven't used in a long time, but. It's to keep you, if you keep your ears clean and dry every night when before you go to bed, you'll stop having so much pain. Um, and of course, the sooner you do it to the end of your swim training that day, the better you'll feel and the less pain you'll have in your ears. Is swimming good for your brain? Swimming is good for your brain. Swimming gives you something called vitamin S. I think the S stands for swimming, but I'm, I know it doesn't. But it gives you focus. So it's good for a lot of kids with ADHD or autism. Uh, it gives you really good focus because you're, you're, you're losing senses. All of your senses are bombarded by the water. So things sound different, taste different, smell different. Probably don't smell at all because hopefully you're not smelling. They look different. Things in the water are different. So it kind of gives you a different state of mind of space to think and build gray matter, kind of like meditating um, in your brain. So it then uh, does make you more intelligent, makes you a little bit sharper and makes you more focused. It also gives you uh, any exercise or sport in general, any discipline in general will also give you that determination, that hard work ethic. Um, so I, yeah, swimming is very good for your brain. <laughs> Let's see, next question. Thanks for teaching me how to float on my back. You're welcome. Sad hurts is the worst. Sad hurts is the worst dealt with that the first half of my competitive career. Yeah, Daniel did have to get tubes uh, in his ears. But Daniel's my younger brother. Yeah, okay. Water, bacteria, infection. Yes, water is, damn places are where Things like bacteria can grow fast, rapidly, moist, damp areas. And in your ear, when water gets trapped in there, it becomes a moist, damp area that is exposed to. So bacteria grows in there faster, so you just got to keep it dry and clean. Dry and clean vinegar and alcohol. One more question. When I'm doing backstroke, sometimes the water goes up my nose and I have to stop. Any tips? Yes. When you're on your back, keep your chin up. Okay. Sometimes your chin drops too much and then your face goes in the water or water starts splashing up your nose. So keep your chin up where there's less chance of water to splash over your face because your face will be higher in the water with your chin up. And then when you breathe in, when you breathe on backstroke, even I do this when I breathe on backstroke, I breathe in with my mouth, out with my nose, just to keep all water staying out of my nose, stroke after stroke, as I continue to splash water over my face from the water that falls off my arm. So I'm going, <laughs> blowing out of my nose, breathing in with my mouth. Um, that's the best way to keep the water out of your nose on backstroke. Better chin position, better head position, and a better breathing technique. What is the key to do a good duck dive? I don't know what a duck dive is. I'm going to look it up real quick just so I don't make the mistake, but I'm going to assume a duck dive is just like a normal competitive start. How did duck dive? Hey, there's already a YouTube video on this. Somebody's already done it. What is a duck dive? 
The duck dive is a technique used by surfers to sink their surfboards underwater. Oh, so they can dip under waves. Yeah, duck dive. So what was the question? What is it? Or what is the key to a good duck dive? Oh, key to a d good duck dive. Deep breath, deep breath and push the nose of the board down. Okay, deep breath because you're gonna be under the air for a little bit and the, the air in your lungs will pull you back up to the surface once the weight passes over you and you've already completed the duck. So the oxygen in your lungs will pull you back to the surface faster. So deep breath, dip the nose down until you feel the weight pass and then pull the nose up. So you're gonna need a grip on your surfboard to go up and down. Um, but I'm, I'm not a surfer by any means, so there may be a better tip out there if anybody's a surfer or knows a surfer that would love to chime in. Thanks, gotta go bye, bye, thanks, you're welcome. Do you put your knees to your chest and then put your legs up to sink? What? I don't try to sink. Do you put your knees to your chest and then put your legs up to sink? Hmm. Oh, surface dive, huh? Uh, do you put your knees to your chest and then put your legs up to surface dive? Surface dive. Explain a surface dive. That's what I'm wondering. Surface dive. What are the three surface dives? I had down to the pike position. Oh, 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 oh. I know what he's asking. He wants to go from like floating on his belly at the surface to being able to just go straight down, like dive straight down. I think that's what he's asking. And if that's what you're asking, easy, yes. So you would want to, um, let's see, I'm floating. First, I'm gonna dive my head down and pull with my hands. So I'm gonna dive my head down, pull with my hands. Then I'm gonna bring my knees into my chest and start using them to kick at the surface until I can get them underwater to be more effective to get me down deeper. Surface dive in lifeguarding, yes, for a submerged victim, yeah. So um, surface diving for a submerged victim, you swim straight out to them and don't dive down early and swim toward them because that's a longer path and you'll run out of air sooner. So what you should do is you swim right, if this is the victim down here, you swim right over top of them and then do the surface dive straight down. Um, another way to do it is by pushing yourself up or down with your hands by standing up straight in the water. That's if you have a, an inner tube with you, which you should always have an inner tube with you, even if you're doing the other surface dive. But yeah, you uh, for a surface dive, you would go and you bring your knees into your chest as you dive your head down and swim down to the bottom. Thanks, you have been really helpful. Just one more question. How many breaststrokes should I be doing in a 25 meter pool? I'm doing 13 all out. What should I be aiming for? Thanks so much. Yeah, 13 all out sounds good. Um, I would say, depending on your age, body type, gender, and um, competitive training, uh, and technique, efficiency, all that's gonna depend on how many strokes you should be taking. Um, I think a great swimmer can keep their breaststroke under 10 strokes a length, which is, Pretty good, um, that's really good. So anything between 10 and 15 is awesome. Thanks, I'm 13. 1380R, mm -hmm. 1,380 years old. Will you have a live chat again? When will you have a live chat again? We do it every Monday. We're doing live chats every Monday. I'm glad you asked. Um, I can also try to start doing like casual live streams, maybe over on Instagram or I don't know if they do live streams on TikTok. I just got there finally. Um, and I can't really do anything on Facebook anymore because as I said in one of my live streams recently, my Facebook got hacked and it got changed and just it's gone. I tried to get it back with Facebook by uploading my ID, but they're just helpless. They're, they, they're, they, they can't help. They're just some of the worst customer service ever. So anyways, but um, live streams on other platforms might be an idea for me because you know every good social media presence is trying to grow on more than one platform. You don't wanna put all your eggs in one basket. 
<clears throat> same time, 9 p.m.? Uh, not necessarily. We're trying to experiment with the time. So like last, or this week, we went, we tried to go from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. my time, which would have been 9 to 11 p.m. if you're in the east on the East Coast. But it's a different time zone in India, and that's our second largest audience base, I think, still is India. So we're trying to find different times of the day. So maybe next Monday I'm going to be doing it at noon. I don't know. I, um, I'm going to try and keep it pretty consistent. Tonight we had some good conversations, some good questions. We're still not getting enough support in the super chat for it to be any longer than what we did tonight. Um, because I have to work and I have to do things that will bring back the revenue. But... Um, I would love to probably do it every Monday evening just so I can spend my day off most of the day just getting things done, preparing for the week, and then Monday night finishing it off with you guys right before I go to bed. I think that's totally fine. Um, we could also try longer live streams, but like I said, it has to be worth it. I appreciate you you, you finding me very helpful. I appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, like I said, we're going to try and do it more consistently. Um, at the, I'm sorry, more consistent time, but we're still experimenting at what time do we get the best responses, the most interaction, what time do we get, um, at what time of the day do we get people who will contribute to the super chat, things like that. Uh, not sleep. Hi, Johnny. Hello. How are you? I'm Justin. Hi, Justin. Oh, wait. Justin, uh, will you post on your website? Well, I post on my website. Of course I'll post on my website. I always post on my website. Oh, will you post on your website? What do you mean post on my website? Like a like a live stream or Justin Who? What's up, Justin Who? Big man, good to see you. Man, I miss you. I hope your night, days at Nitro are going well. And I think you also swim at Waterloo. Hope that's going well, man. If you ever want private swim lessons, tell your dad to call me. Um, what time live stream? So I don't do live streams on my website, if that's what you're asking. I don't know if that's possible. I could ask Neeraj to look into that. He's my CDO, my chief digital officer. He does all the, he figures out all that stuff for me. Quit Waterloo, though Nitro was better. I thought Nitro was better, good. Nitro was better. Go Nitro. I love The Waterloo Club does a lot of good stuff too. But I obviously have a history with Nitro, so I like to cheer for Nitro. Um. Post on my website. So I, I post like some of the YouTube videos we do on on the website on my website. Let's see, go to rocketswimming.com. Have a good night, Kevin. I'm gonna be signing off here in two minutes as well. Have a good night, sir. Strangely, I always got a bloody nose when I say the water loose signing off. Yeah, that sounds like a coincidence. I don't think there's anything wrong with Waterloo. Log. Forms. Oh, I left my website. I don't want to do that. Forms. Videos. Sorry to see. Whoa, what's that mean? Latest video. That's cool. Featured video. Cool. Near it updating the website looks amazing man that's awesome i love that that's so cool all right guys thank you for a good evening i hope you enjoyed the the live stream um hope you got your answers quite or your questions answered i look forward to seeing you again next week thanks a lot we'll hook you up for some lessons soon awesome that sounds good to me uh, Daniel Center, whoops, your website looks good. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, yeah, for those of you who want the website, rocketswimming.com. You can go and check it out. Um, that's also where you would sign up for private lessons with me that we do via FaceTime. You film, you get someone to film you swim in a couple laps that I request you to film, and then we go over it on a FaceTime call together. And we can do that with WhatsApp video chat. You don't have to have an Apple device. I just say FaceTime for all video chats. Zoom, we can do it. Zoom, we can do anything. I've got it all. All the platforms. All right, guys, signing off. Talk to you later. Have a good night. Thank you, and we'll see you next week. Keep rocking it.